Welcome back. This is Fox, part two in my video going over Crown Falls. In part one, we covered why you would use Crown Falls as an industrial island. A lot of people on the Reddit are asking me, why would you do this? You've massacred Crown Falls. I always use it for population. So in the first part, there'll be a link in the description. As I just said, it goes through why, why would you not do it? If you're a min-maxer like me or somebody aiming for a big population, if you're not using Crown Falls as your main industrial island, you are severely, severely limiting yourself. As I said in the description, uh, there'll be a link to that video. I'll just briefly go over what the main reasons were. The main one being the palace and all of its boost. You get the attractiveness. We can use all of these boosts because the palace is on this island and the palace is maxed out. So we get 300 island work tours for pack. 300 island workforce per town hall, 200 attractiveness per town hall, which uh, means we can get the 33 attractiveness pretty easy, which then means all of the palace boosts are maxed out. The other palace boosts, we've got 60% productivity, buildings within a trade union, another 50% productivity from electricity. This whole island is electrified, so everything is getting these boosts. We've then got the area of influence for all public buildings. I'm running this whole island off only six electric power plants, oil power plants. This one probably didn't even need this. If I rerouted stuff and shifted this over here, this could catch on the edge of this one. And So you could probably run the whole island off five, to be fair. Maybe four if you've done it more streamlined. Um, then we've got the added bonus of uh, 1,200 tonnes of island storage per Habermaster's office. I think we had four connected. And a minus 50% loading times for ships at trading face and piers. So... Super fast loading times, free workforce, massive coverage from your oil power plants. Just do it. Easily get the attractiveness with the town all started around and amongst your factories. So yeah, that was the why would you do this. Today we're going to be going over how. How would you go about doing something as crazy as this? Um, I was going to split it in two. I was going to cover the industry side of it and then the logistics side of it. But I'm going to cover one thing at a time if you get what I mean. We're going to go over telephones today and their respective goods that they need, so filaments and veneers. And we're also going to talk about the infrastructure I've got in place and how I do my trade routes and stuff so I know what's going on. So telephones, yes. A couple of members of my uh, Discord group and um, loyal followers of mine mentioned that I probably should have covered the clipping aspect of these telephones in the last video because it's the main reason, again, why Crown Falls is perfect for this. These telephone factories... Over a half of these telephone factories are clipped, which means they're being affected by two trade unions. You can see this trade union affects everything inside this cluster. So this building here, we go to the next one over, it's catching this one as well. If we click on this building, you can see it's getting double the boost of everything. Double the printing press, double the beckoning, double the ferrous, double the Department of Labour, double the Galvanic Act. So when these are flat out, they're at, I mean, they keep stalling now because I'm nowhere near at the number of scholars that these are designed for so but when these are flat out they are running at something crazy like 600 percent or something stupid like that so they take that they're doing the work of two telephone factories in the space of one so i really really should have covered that in the last video uh the main reason being look at the sheer amount of space the amount of trade unions i've got doing this clipping when you think over half of these telephone manufacturers are clipped, if I was to not clip them, or I was doing it on a smaller island in the old world or in the Cape, this is probably this area here is probably about the big the size of a big island. So look at this island here. The area that these are covering is probably about the same size as that. Because half of these are clipped, I would need another medium island or maybe another big island if I wasn't clipping these to generate the same amount of telephones so you can really see the power of clipping and having such a big space on crown falls enable it enables us to do that pretty easily it as i said in the last video it was a bit of a task fitting the town or the trade unions in amongst the town halls it took a lot of forward thinking and some puzzling a lot of tetris to get everything working how i wanted but yeah that, that as i say that's another reason why you would decide to use crown fall for this it, it sort of rolls in with the amount of space you've got, but yeah, clipping. Very important feature of a min max or a max pop player like myself. So yes, telephones, what do they need? They need filaments and wood veneers. 
Obviously, they're all running off electricity. Most of the filament factories are fit inside the train un union bubbles, you can see. If we just focus on this one, this has got one, two, three, four telephone manufacturers uh, being clipped, three not clipped, and then three filament factories all with inside it. These are then pretty much all going to this and that. So two warehouses, two warehouses uh, can easily feed uh, one town or trade union cluster I worked out. So filament factories, the reason why I put these inside these circles with the trade unions as well is there are no dedicated specialists for filament factories or telephone factories. I've been asking for one. If, look, if we telephone manufacturer, these are all just generic boosts that can affect every building. There are no dedicated specialists for a telephone manufacturer. If we do a filament factory as well, same list of boosts, no dedicated specialists. So whatever whatever boosts I was going to have inside the trade union affecting the telephone manufacturers, the filament factories would all definitely be able to make the most out of all of those boosts as well. So it made sense to fit them in the space in between the telephone factories. Another reason as well is these telephone factories will go straight to the filament factories to collect the filaments instead of going to a warehouse. So all these telephone factories have got to do is nip to the filament factory and then they've got to go to a warehouse to get the veneers and then put it back. So because we've got less filament factories inside the cluster than we need, like we probably would need four or five telephone uh, filament factories to feed these. These filament factories are never going to use a warehouse. They're always going to be pumping filaments straight into the telephone manufacturers when everything is running at full. So again, you're saving on carts from filament factories going to the warehouses, which means you've got more space in the warehouses for the telephone manufacturers to use, which means you need less warehouses. So a lot of words to say something very simple, but filament factories, these need coal. On Ireland, we are producing 210 out of 556 tonnes needed. So that means we need 346 tonnes of coal to be imported to this island from elsewhere. We're pretty much there, if I remember correctly. If we go to... Um, the coal is just being produced on mines. I've got one tiny little cluster of charcoal kilns here just pumping up the figures but the rest of it i've got 10 coal mines all being boosted by my standard setup except for this one because it's inside the catchment of the uh the clipped cab assembly line if we go to another one yeah so my standard setup this is just out of reach of the electricity from this power plant down here so this had to have a meg in it to get maximum effect. So it's got Angela Meg, your Grand Mouching, and a first rate sapper. If they are in reach of electricity, I'll swap out Meg for a Ferros. As you can see me doing now. There's not a Ferros there. That's why coal factory. I don't believe I could get one in there. So I'm lying to you. I told you all of them. I'd say, hey, here we go. Ferris, Mountain, Supper. Ferris, Mountain, Supper. This one wants changed into a Ferris, but yeah. Suffice to say, we are producing 210 tons of coal on island. Most of that coming from the coal mines. We've got seven charcoal kilns. So where's the rest coming from for these filament factories? The rest is coming from all over the shop. This is going to talk about how I label my routes now. So we go to Cape Coal. I've got 376 tons coming in from elsewhere. This is how I do it. I have one list of trade routes for one good coming into one island that it's needs. So Cape Coal, everything that's coming in from other islands elsewhere that's coming to the Cape, providing coal, is in this 
obviously subgroup if you like so cape coal i'll then label it by island and how much they're bringing in so scholar 2 is bringing in 85 tons investor 1 17 grain 15 scholar 4 44 investor 2 14 you get the idea 88 11 59 30 13 now this all adds up to 376 tons of coal per minute believe it or not and we only needed 346 so i could start deleting some more of these charcoal kilns that was the idea as i'm building my scholar islands up get rid of these charcoal kilns here that frees up space to have some more houses and stuff so we'll go to an island where we're making the coal if we go to the old world this island here it's got six coal factories six coal mines sorry they're at full because the ship must be waiting to come and collect the coal and send it away or it must be on its way scholar oh well 45 that's the coal here's the coal so i've only got two sh ships on here picking it up this is on its way i probably need another ship i mean I'm not too bothered about islands where they're uh, not using oil farms because the oil the oil is being shipped, uh, the coal comes from the Cape and it doesn't store progress. So I should probably put another ship on this line to keep the coal flowing. I've, I have it set to an unload order so if the Cape's full it's going to dump it just to keep it flowing because these coal mines are obviously generating the oil which the power plants are running off. So as you can see that's how I label things up. They're divided into a subgroup, Cape Coal. Then each island is labelled up where it's coming from and then the figure at the end as well. So I can quickly see how much is coming from where. It's a very, very clever way to do it. I do the same with the veneers. So telephone factories require filaments, which we've gone over. They then require veneers. So if we go to the roots, Cape Coal. If we go to Cape Veneers, you can see I've labelled this at the top 520 plus. We're well over 520. I believe it's 550 in total. We need 518 tonnes. It says we're producing 29 tonnes a minute, but these are all coming from sawmills and brick factories. And there's a possibility that when the warehouses get full, that these will stop. So I don't count them in my calculations. So I needed to make 520 tonnes of veneers to get sent to this island. Uh, the wood and stuff takes up a lot of space and the veneer factories I uh, probably could have squeezed them up here but I decided to use the smaller islands in the cape to create these veneers. There are three of them. So this is veneer three. This is veneer one. This is veneer two. You can see Veneer 180, I'll put it in the title of the island as well, so I know this is making 180 veneers a minute. The wood is being made on an island here, I'm overproducing the wood. They didn't need, why this was a good choice to use on these smaller islands is because they don't need any electricity to get them to be at full capacity because there's a specialist, Seraphim Papadakis, the window dresser. He affects all carpentry works and window makers. These veneer factories are a carpentry works. He produces electricity, so he gives them the electricity. You don't need an oil power plant. You don't need to worry about generating it or shipping it around. So yeah, it's a massive boost. Um, we've then got the palace on the island with the Department of Labour and the electricity boost. So they're getting a massive boost from the electricity. The other items that I use are Harker's Electric Trader Lathe. This is plus percent, 50% percent productivity and a minus 25% workforce. It's a massive boost. I then put the bell in just for good measures. Um, I probably could have boosted these again. These are running off artisan uh, engineers. I'm plus 10,000 on the engineers. That is plus 10,000 is for the research institute. So if I wanted to push this more, when the research institute is finished, I've researched everything that I need. I could easily swap this bell out for a ferrous, increase production, um, put a couple more of these around here, and then we'd be able to vastly improve the amount of veneers coming from this island. So this was veneer one. This is veneer two, very similar. This is producing two tons a minute more, producing way over the amount of wood we need as well. Um, same deal. Serapim, 
Uh, what have I decided to go for a Ferras here instead of the electricity boost? Maybe because I wanted to boost... That's right, because it was a smaller island and this mountain range was in the way. For me to get the most amount of uh, wood I could from these lumberjacks huts, I needed the four items to decrease the density. If I remove this... Oh, I shouldn't have done that. If I remove that though, I wouldn't have been able to have these so close together. And I wouldn't have got being able to get the amount of wood that I wanted. So it was a smart move. The palace is on uh, one, at one item slot per trade unions. We're still getting the 60% productivity from buildings within reach of a trade union. And the extra trade item slot where I'm putting a ferrous in is 50% boost. So it's same to the electricity boost if you have it, excuse me, on its own. So we were losing nothing, but we were gaining an extra trade union slot to enable these lumberjack sets to be crammed closer together. So yeah, this one's producing 182 tons a minute. We've then got Veneer 3, which is this one down here, I believe. This one's done a bit different. I was making a lot of surplus wood from my coach makers in the old world. So I believe, if I'm right, the wood for these veneer factories comes from coach makers. Look, coach makers wood. 140. So I've got 140 tons of wood a minute being made on my Coachmakers Island. Being sent over here, we need 106, so we're well over what we need. This is my coach making island in the old world. Making coaches for my cab assembly line. This is the wood production producing 146. We only need 28 tons a minute, so it's more like 110 tons. So let's go back. And what did we need? We needed 106. So yeah, I should probably... Oh yeah, that 140 was the output. Yeah, 141. So we're good. So yeah, wood from coach makers coming in here to the veneer factory. Then these are all being shipped over to the Cape. I had some extra space on this island. I need a lot more grain for my pig farms, uh, my canneries and stuff. We're all using the flour and the pig method. So yeah. Filled the space up with the grain farms on here. This is also, as well as the 140 veneers, producing me 62 tons of grain a minute. It's not a massive amount. I believe I still need to set on my grain surplus. Yes, I do. We're at we're only producing 50 tons a minute more than what we need worldwide, and I've still got a lot of scholars to go. So probably going to need to do another little mini mini grain island. If we go to the old world, I've got couple of little islands undone you see these two I'm thinking about using these for grain just fit in one trade union cluster at each should be able to get 120 150 tons out of those two should push us past the amount we need to finish that so that deals with the veneers as I say the veneers are all made on the tiny islands in the cape all being shipped over here the wood being made on site no need to transport the wood from other islands apart from the one where it's coming from the coach makers where I just did a full trade union cluster around it because I had the space and then just realised I had enough to supply a trade union cluster of veneers so it made sense just to ship it over here and use it. So yeah, that's it. Then the telephone ma manufacturers themselves obviously are using electricity. They're using the veneers and the filaments being boosted by the items that we specified earlier. Most of these are at zero workforce. The ones that are being clipped are all at zero workforce because they're getting double the printing presses and double the ferrous. That will be enough to make them zero workforce on their own. But this beckoning Spirit of the Liberty, he gives a real good boost. He gives a plus 25% boost and another minus 25% workforce. So the ones that are being clipped are at zero, way more than zero. They would be a lot, lot less. The ones that aren't, are at minus 10, minus 25, minus 35, minus 40. So they're at minus 75%. So the ones that aren't clipped are only got a quarter, quarter of the workforce needed to, to run them. So real good items these are to use to give a good amount of boost and workforce reduction, which is what you want on an island like this. So yeah, that's it. Telephones. It took a lot longer than I thought. That's 20 minutes just for telephones. The clipping was a massive part of this. I feel like I should touch on it again especially the, the main challenge was fitting in the trade unions amongst the town halls uh, the only way i worked it out was to get the town halls diagonal as i said in the last video and the trade unions horizontal 
fill in the gaps in between with scholars warehouses as a university here for the scholars the other gaps may generally have got warehouses fire stations and scholars you can see this there wasn't enough room to do nothing here because i managed to squeeze a filament factory in but we've got a radio tower making use of the spaces in between as much as we can so yeah that covers how the hell do you do telephones on such a big scale on Crown Falls? Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, stay tuned. We're going to be going over boot production. We'll do boots and suits in the next video because a lot of this has already been covered. But suffice to say, much of the same. The uh, linen coming in for the boot for the suits is labelled in fox cape linen, cotton, cape cotton, much of the same, but yeah, we'll be going over the boots and the suits next video. As always, thanks for watching, come join us on the Discord if you enjoyed this, and we will see you in the next one. Cheers.